Good afternoon. Today, we are going to discuss the spiritual and political significance of Pope Francis' pastoral trip to the Democratic Republic of the Congo and South Sudan. Since his election as the leader of the Catholic faithful, Pope Francis has been to uh, Africa five times. In 2015, he visited Kenya, Uganda, and Central African Republic. In 2017, he went to Egypt. In March 2019, he went to Morocco and later in September visited Mozambique, Madagascar, and Mauritius. Africa Faith and Justice Network wishes to exp express its full communion with the Pope during his trip to the Democratic Republic of Congo and South Sudan. Uh, a number of organizations, uh, uh, Africa Faith and Justice included, wrote uh, to the Pope uh, uh, last year when he was planning to go to Africa. Unfortunately, he canceled the trip. Uh, this time we have been able to resend the letter. In that letter, we called his attention to some of the current challenges the continent is facing. We asked that he uses his office to mobilize the whole Africa to find adequate solutions to some of the most urgent issues facing the continent. It is particularly the growing deterioration of security, the urgent need for uh, good governance, the fight against corruption and the lack of accountability of leaders to build adequate, uh, to build the Africa that the African needs. And finally, land grabbing, often disguised as investment, which is just a new form of colonization. Other equally important issues confronting the continent are human trafficking, women's economic empowerment, arms trade, illicit financial flows, unemployment, and much more. During this trip, we ask that uh, he mentions uh, these problems uh, in his message to citizens of the host countries, to African political leaders and to all people of goodwill. We wish to let him, to let uh, those affected by these issues that we are not indifferent to their suffering and do not wish to be complicit by remaining silent. Now, with me to discuss the spiritual and political significance of Pope Francis, trip to the Democratic Republic of Congo and South Sudan is Sister Joan Mumo. She is a sister of uh, the Immaculate Heart of Mary Monroe, Michigan, and also Executive Director of uh, Friends in Solidarity, uh, a U.S. partner organization with Solidarity with South Sudan. Sister Joan, welcome. Thank you. Also, with me is uh, Father Bartelemi Bazemo. He is a missionary of Africa, uh, also a board member of the Africa Faith and Justice Network. He teaches at uh, Georgetown University here in Washington, D.C. Father Bartelemi, welcome. Thank you. Now, um, let me start with Sister Joan. Uh, Sister, the Pope is. Um, the leader of the Catholic Church, and he has been working with the other faith leaders uh, in South Sudan. And I would like to know uh, what is the significance of uh, this ecumenical approach to his work? Thank you very much for um, having us and for raising up this trip of Pope Francis and the ecumenical nature of, of the trip. He is, uh, attending or visiting uh, South Sudan with the Archbishop of Canterbury, Justin Walby, and also with the head uh, moderator of the Church of Scotland, Ian Greenshield. I think the ecumenical nature is very significant because uh, it takes um, the effort of everybody coming together and because over 50% of the country is Christian, it's significant that the churches work together 
to bring about peace in the country. And they have been significant in 1972 in the, after the first civil war, and again in 1983, and then with the Comprehensive Peace Agreement of 2005, which led to independence. The church has been involved every step of the way, both locally and oftentimes in the place of government when government didn't exist. Yes, the church has always uh, been there for the people in Africa. The, uh, uh, it's in the school system, it's the healthcare system. But for the Bazemo, I would like to know what is or what should be the spiritual significance of the Pope's visit to this continent that has a big number of Catholics, uh, even even uh, growing in, in, in numbers. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you very much for inviting me to be part of this conversation. Um, I would say since assuming the responsibility of the head of the Catholic Church, uh, you said in your introductory note that the Pope has been to Africa five times. It shows the importance he gives to working for the people of Africa. Uh, as the head of the Catholic Church, he goes to Africa with a message of peace and hope. Uh, it's a continent that's facing a lot of challenges and the Pope is trying to build bridges between communities and especially um, countries that have been really wrecked um, by war, conflict, famine, is going to South Sudan as a pilgrim of peace. And he goes as a head of the Catholic Church, but also as the president of, you know, the, the Holy See. He is also head of state, but he's trying to put the issues of Africa on the map. It's a continent that's really facing many challenges. And I believe that um, he will be giving peace a new, begin in terms of let's work together, let's help solve the problem of Africa and also address the challenges of social justice. It's a continent that is extremely rich and yet it's a continent that is still suffering. And I believe that when he meets with leaders, he's going to tell them to find better ways of handling differences. And I know that that's what is taken to South Sudan and also to the uh, Republic, uh, Democratic Republic of Congo. And also to invite all their neighbors who can one way or the other contribute to the peace, regional peace, to be part of the winning league. And I believe that that's the message he's going to bring to them. And he's really working tirelessly to bring that message of hope and reconciliation. And I believe that his trip will be, will have a big impact on the two countries and also neighboring countries of South Sudan and also uh, the uh, Democratic Republic of Congo. Uh, Sister John, um, you work with uh, Friends in Solidarity. Uh, in an interview with um, Vatican News, uh, Father Jim, Jim Green, uh, the Executive Director of Solidarity with South Sudan, said that the Pope, the Pope's trip is a pilgrimage. Um, can you explain what is it uh, that is really uh, packaged in this sense of pilgrim? The pilgrimage, it's really a pilgrimage of peace, which means that the three leaders, Christian leaders of the predominant faith in uh, South Sudan are following up on a meeting uh, that was held in Rome uh, in August of 2019, a retreat for the leaders of South Sudan. And at that particular retreat, it was decided that the three leaders would make an ecumenical pilgrimage to go in peace, seeking peace in South Sudan in the near future. Of course, we know that what was planned for July of 2022 did not happen because of the Pope's health, but it's now happening. And um, I think the pilgrimage is a pilgrimage of peace. It brings hope 
and hopefully it's reinvigorating the peace process in South Sudan. For the Bazemo, you are from uh, um, Burkina Faso. Your country is facing challenges. The whole Sahel is facing challenges. Is there any message that the people of the Sahel and other um, war-torn uh, part of Africa have to, to hear from these leaders? Yes, I think um, this is what Africa needs for its development. And what has happened in the Sahel Belt, in the Congo, in the Horn of Africa, the northern part of Mozambique, all those countries have been facing of late challenges of terrorism. Uh, it is a growing concern internationally, but of late, the Sahel Belt has been very much engrossed in that problem. And I think uh, Pope Francis' message of peace should also resound across that part of Africa. Many communities, uh, vulnerable communities have been affected by that. Many kids don't go to school anymore. Uh, there are many internally displaced people, a few millions across the Sahel, for reasons that I believe could find a solution if we can sit and talk. And I want Pope Francis to also address that message to all the people of Africa. There is a better way of handling our differences. If it is a question of political issues, to invite all the stakeholders to be able to sit and talk. And let us find again our brotherly, sisterly, I would say values that have always been known to be African values. We don't have to fight over resources. We don't have to fight over power. There is a better way of handling those issues. So I just hope that Pope Francis in his message that he addresses to the people of South Sudan, to the people of DR Congo, who've been also uh, facing challenges for many, many decades, and also to the whole continent, that um, let's give peace a chance. Let's find solution to our common problems and be able to gather our energies to be able to fight for the development of the continent because the continent has what it takes to give food and opportunities to all. Initially, the Pope was going to visit the people of Eastern Dia Congo, where currently the Rwandan troops have occupied a sizable uh, tight territory of the DRC. Yes, people are displaced, many are dying. I believe this is the moment for them to hear from somebody who believes in peace. And equally, during this moment, we appeal to the leader of Rwanda to refrain from violence and come back to the negotiating table because the life of every innocent is God's life. No one has the right to take it. While they are, the Congolese people are calling for international solidarity in this moment, we really encourage all the stakeholders to come to the table of negotiation and give peace a chance. I'd like to thank you, Sister John, and you, Father Bazemo, for your time, for your insights, for your prayers for Africa, and also for the success of uh, the Pope uh, during his pastoral ministry and other leaders who are going with him. May God bless all their work, and we shall continue to discuss this. For those who want to know more about our work, you can visit us at uh, www.afgen.org or simply Google Africa Faith and Justice Network. And um, also you can check out Friends uh, in Solidarity to know the work that uh, Sister John is doing. And also you can Google Missions of Africa, Washington, D.C. to know the work that Father Bazemo is doing here in the United States. Once again, thank you both for your time. God bless. Thank you very much. Thank you for having us. Thank you.